Hey guys and welcome to another review video. Now in front of you you can see my two headlamps. Now I did used to have a third that's gone off to my dad. This one here is now my wife's because she conveniently lost hers. This is the 2015 Black Diamond Storm 160 looms. So I had the perfect excuse to buy the 2016 250 loom, so the new one. Now, like I did in my last videos, Regarding the headlamp comparisons, I will kind of give you a rundown of all the stats and how it works, etc, etc. Uh, but also I'll compare it to the previous generation. So let's get started with the review. So first and foremost, you've got your statistics or your specs. And the great thing about the Black Diamond uh, headlamps, they've got all their stats on the back. So obviously let's have a look at these now. I will read these out, and even though you can see them, but also tell you how they compare it compared to the previous uh, model. So you have here a minimum of four lumens, maximum of 250. You've got the claimed kind of beam length two meters out to 80. And probably one of the more important stats, your burn time, 250 at your minimum lumens and 60 at your maximum. So how does this compare to the previous model? Well, I'll just go over the burn time since that's probably the most important feature there. You can obviously know that you're getting over 90 lumens more on the maximum, you know, hence Black Diamond Storm 250 versus Black Diamond Storm 160. On the minimum setting, you had 200 hours, so you've got 250 here. On the maximum setting, you had 70, whereas you're getting 60 here. Now, you are gaining over 90 lumens, so not quite double, but a pretty massive jump, and I can definitely tell you it makes a big difference, 160 to 250. You are losing 10 hours, but for the amount you game, I think that is definitely a massive uh you know, a trade-off in the right direction. There's no problems there. 60 is still heaps. Minimum, you're gaining 50 hours. So you're losing 10 here, but you're gaining 50 there. And honestly, for me, I'm using my headlamp more so towards this end of the scale. When you're at camp and you're setting up, you know, your gas cooker or what have you, maybe looking into your bag, usually you've got the fire going and you only need that little bit of extra light to look into the bag. Or even when you're in the tent, you don't need too much light. Uh, you've got the power tap feature to, you know, it was on the previous generation. And again, I'll, I'll kind of show you on this one to give you that maximum light if you really, really need it for a short space of time. Otherwise, you can quite happily sit in the lower lumen section. So, you know, I'm, I'm losing 10, but gaining 50 for me, that's a big plus. That's a big win. I'm definitely happy with that. Even if you're, you know, not quite losing, using the minimum setting, you're, you might be running it at, you know, 20 lumens or 50 lumens. I definitely think that you'll you'll probably win out on the battery battery side of things. But, you know, 250 versus 160 lumens, yeah, awesome, cool. On the right-hand side here, you've got all the different functions. There's one new function. Um, let's start at the bottom, though, your weight. Um, Weight-wise, it hasn't changed. You've got 62 grams, empty 110 grams with batteries. Again, exactly the same. Power tap feature, dimming, strobe. Uh, the new feature is you've, along with the red, you've got a green low light uh, option there. You've got your proximity and you've got your lock. So everything has stayed exactly the same. Obviously, one of the biggest changes has been how it physically looks. So let's compare the two different headlamps. So, as you can see, the 2016 has had a little bit of a facelift. The 2014-2015 models looked exactly the same. And personally, I really like the new look of the 2016 version. It looks a little bit uh, thinner. It's got a kind of more or smaller type profile. Looks a little bit... Um, it just looks nice. It's, it looks a little bit simple. This looked a little bit kind of too space age and whatever for me. Uh, if I could pick between the two designs, I'd definitely be going with this one. There's only, you know, in terms of performance, only two real differences with this one. You've got the extra 90 looms and you've also got the green light. Apart from that, it works more or less exactly the same. There are a few 
positive cosmetic changes, I guess you can say, which I'll go over. Uh, but there's also a really bad one with the new one. So I'll tell you about that as well. So let's go over with how it works. Uh, you know, you've got your button up here and this has been one of the good cosmetic changes. I really like how it's uh, flat. Your, your finger finds the button much more naturally than this kind of, you know, upward shape with all the different... Um, corners and curves and and what have you so this is a really really nice change it, it i find it much easier to kind of reach the button and use the button um not to say this was bad but i think this is better um you know currently it's locked which is a great feature um you know whenever i have it in my pack i make sure the uh, torch is locked and the way you lock it unlock it is hold the top button for six seconds so let's go ahead and do that Okay, now to operate the main light, you're, you obviously just switch it on and switch it off. If you want to get over to the uh, proximity light where it spreads the beam out really, really wide, you just press twice and there you've got your proximity light going there. Every time you turn the torch on as well, you've got your battery meter there. Uh, one of three different colors, you've got your green, your yellow and your red all representing different percentages of what, how much battery you have left. Now to dim the light uh, or increase the light, you simply press and hold and you'll notice a little strobe when it reaches its maximum and its minimum and it'll just keep uh, adjusting until I let go of the button. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, there you go, going down, there's your minimum, you see the strobe, there's your maximum, there's your minimum again there's your maximum. So let's leave it on the maximum there for a second. You'll notice that the proximity light also turns on, which is great. Um, I used this the other week uh, doing a night ride in the, in the bush. And I can't tell you how awesome it was, uh, how, awesome, yeah, how awesome it was having 250 lumens, um, not just coming from the main light, uh, but also having that proximity light, especially on the bike. You know, you didn't see the trail just in front of you, but you could really see, you know, far in front of you, you could also see directly what's in front of you. So I really like how they've incorporated the proximity light in its maximum setting. Now, like I said, I usually use the smallest setting. So let's go right down. Uh, but if you do want to reach the maximum setting quite quickly and you only want to use it for a little bit, you've got your power tap button. So let's go over and press that and it's that easy. That goes straight to the maximum setting, press it again, it goes straight back to the minimum. So you're in your tent doing whatever, you need to go outside for a little bit, you want maximum uh, power, you press the button, go back in your tent and go back to that setting, the setting that you had beforehand. So that's really useful. Uh, going into the low light function, so the red and the green, we'll turn the torch off. You press and hold for three seconds. One, two, three. You've got your green. If you want to switch over to the red, you press it twice, and that's how easy it is. Now, one thing I didn't like on the old black diamond is over here to exchange to change the batteries. You had to use your impromptu flathead screwdriver and, you know, kind of fiddle around with it. And it wasn't very strong plastic. So if you did it up too tight or over time, it would start to bend. And it would become a little bit annoying. And then you had to kind of pry open the case. And it was doable, but it became a bit of a hassle. Whereas with the new one, it becomes much, much easier. You've got this kind of hinge system. So if I want to change the batteries, you know, and then I'll open it up and it's really that easy. Close it back up again, hook and done. One more time. Ba -bum. And close it back up, done. Now we'll see how good this works in the long run, but definitely a awesome improvement and big, big, fan of this change. Good work, Black Diamond. The other really nice positive change is you've got this extra padding here against your forehead where the previous headlamp did not have that. Um, awesome, much more comfortable. But if you want, you can also change the straps around. So you can actually take the straps out through there. The previous headlamp did not have that feature. So that's a big plus for me too. Let's get down to the biggest negative, and this has to do with the other end of the strap. So over here, you've got two uh, two ways to tighten. You know, you press and hold, and you'll you'll pull out, and that'll tighten the strap. But if you notice, if you're wearing it this way, this one sits on the outside, so your head will go in the middle, and this sits on the outside, so it's it's reasonably comfortable. This one here. Um, 
you'll notice that it sits on the inside. So that's a bit of a pain. You're not gonna notice it straight away, but after, you know, 15 minutes of use or what have you, you start to get sore spots because of this buckle is on the inside of the head straps. So I don't really know what they were thinking there. They engineered an amazing headlamp, but you know, this is a bit of a let down to be perfectly honest with you. Um, and that's probably my biggest problem with this torch is this head strap. So you can change it, thankfully. So I'm gonna have a look around and maybe I'll be able to find another headband or something like this. But I don't I don't want to lose this padding out the front here. So that's that's a big plus for me. Anyway, let's go see how this headlamp actually compares to the older one out uh, out in the field, out at night what a difference 160 to 200 lumens makes. Okay, so let's take a look at the difference in the beams. Now, I'm just shining them on a wall in the house. I've got a few things up as a point of reference. But over here on the left-hand side, I've got the 160 Storm, and here I've got the 250. So you notice a pretty big difference straight away, much, much brighter. But really the biggest difference is when I go to the maximum setting. So from here, that's the maximum setting there on the 160. Watch what happens when I go to the maximum setting on the 250, and let me just press the button with it out of the way. There we go. So straight away you can see that light proximity light kicking in. So not only has the main beam gotten a lot brighter, but the proximity lights really kicked in and it throws that beam out really wide. Uh, like I mentioned when I went mountain biking, that made an absolutely massive difference. Uh, and it really outperforms the maximum beam there on the 160 Storm. So let's get rid of this one now that you've seen the comparison. Um, this is obviously the beam on its maximum setting. Um, let's go over to the wide beam. So this is the proximity beam. As you can see, it doesn't give heaps of light, but it really throws the beam out quite wide. And I'm moving the torch left to right, but you can see how much area that beam covers. When you're at camp and you're kind of, or in the tent and looking for objects, this is an excellent, excellent beam because it really throws that light out wide. Um, some of the other features that I showed you, um, or I didn't show you beforehand really, is it can strobe. So you press it three times and you've got the strobe function. The other thing is if I press and hold for three, we'll go into the colors and you can cycle those up and down as well. So dimmer and brighter. I can strobe the green as well. One, two, three. Let's switch over to the red. Same thing. I can cycle down. I can cycle up and I can strobe the red as well. So, you know, you can do a lot of things there. Let's switch it over back to the main beam okay so a lot of flexibility a lot of different options with this one torch and again i'll just show you that maximum because it's so impressive uh yeah lots of different flexibility or lots of different options with this torch um all controlled with that one button bit of a learning curve but once you get it you can see how many things you can do how quickly you can access all the different features on the torch and really how impressive it is compared to the older 160 store okay so that about wraps it up uh, in terms of the comparison with the beams uh, i do want to go outside and do this in the bush but the weather's been a bit crappy lately here in sydney so i thought i'd at least do this to show you guys and hopefully i'll do another update video with the beams out in the real world out in the bush all right so that's pretty much it uh, that's kind of my review of the new Black Diamond. Now, I wouldn't have normally gone out and purchased it over the old one, but because my wife lost her old one, she got this one, and I got to get the new one. Is it worth buying, or would I have brought it if I knew the differences and I didn't have to get, give this one away and kind of get the new one? You know what? Maybe. Um, what kind of really sold me is that trip the other week down for a night ride. Uh, for those of you that know Mount Stromlo in Canberra, we did a night ride down there. And I've done night rides before with the old Black Diamond, or now my old Black Diamond, the 160. 
and really it just wasn't quite enough light and when it maxed out the 160 looms it was on that main beam whereas with this one 250 looms and the fact that it uses the proximity light as well i had absolutely no issues riding uh you know quite quite um challenging single trails downhill trails that i've never been on um you know at night pitch black especially you know with trees and canopy there wasn't even really moonlight or stars coming through uh, and I had absolutely no problems like this light actually really really blew me away and the fact that I've you know been using it now for a little while and the light is really really consistent and like uh, I really love the padded the uh, padded headband here for your forehead uh, the inside belt uh, you know the uh, tensioner whatever you want to call it really annoys me but it's something that I can live with for now I do do most of my camping in winter and I'm wearing a beanie so you know eh, okay if a better headband comes around at least I can replace it now you know you couldn't do that with the uh, with the old one and look overall I think it's a great headlamp like it's you know it's it's tough it's the storm um, you've got your you know it's waterproof like rescue units this is their go-to headlamp you know and for a reason so yeah I definitely rate it pretty high uh, if you have the old one if you need that extra 90 lumens if you know for activities such as mountain biking uh, look it's 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 a good upgrade uh, that proximity light really helps with the maximum lumens as you guys you guys saw so uh, yeah thanks for watching if you do have any detailed questions let me know hopefully I covered everything in this in, in this uh, review but if I left something out that you want to know about Feel free to ask in the uh, comments or send me a message and I'll get back to you as fast as I can. Once again, guys, thank you very much for watching.